Well, we finished the carvings. Got both of these here. This one I've gone ahead and burned the detail on. And we'll do that on the other one here in just a second. Uh, I just wanted to show you Here's a good tip. Make you a couple of these things just using an old piece of dowel or something and uh, get you a screw and epoxy it in the end. And that way you can uh, you know, find a place that's not going to be obvious in your carving and screw it in there and it'll give you uh, something to hold this thing as you're working with them, painting them. Because you don't want to handle them with your hands. You'll get all kinds of oil and dirt on them. So anyway, this one's all done, so now we're going to burn this one here. Okay, got my burner here. And we're not going to burn it a lot. I just want to sort of highlight the, the holes. Not the holes, highlight the... Brains. Bone plates. your eyes, make sure you uh, rough them up a little on the edges. See how much better that looks than if it's just perfectly straight and smooth. When you're doing things like this, if there's one thing I'd like to impress upon you, you know, is take your time, do the research, and try to get it as close to the real thing as possible. You don't want your skull looking like a cow skull, because it's not. It's a buffalo skull. That's why it's important to get your horns correct, the shape of the skull correct, because if you don't, it's just not going to look right, and you're not going to be satisfied with it. And although people might say, oh, you're doing a wonderful job, oh, isn't that terrific, all that stuff. You know, it's yourself you have to be satisfied with, not them. Notice something I haven't drilled through there yet. Well, golly. I can't remember if we did that. I think we did that. This is the, this is my backup skull here. Got so many skulls in the works here, it's hard to keep track of them. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That's all we need to do there. But there's a couple more things you want to get. You want to get these uh, holes, nerve holes, vein holes. You just do that with your burning pan. Makes all the difference in the world to getting those things in there. Same thing on the horns. You don't want to have all these even surfaces. They're, they're kind of rough. So just a few little indentations here and there. It'll make them look that much better. Take your burning pen and just highlight them. You 
it's just going to be painted black, so it's really not, not critical that you Even paint, paint it, and that'll look a lot better. Okay, so now after we get this other one done, I'll be off to the sanding station, and I'll sneak over and drill out those holes. There. Okay, I'm over here at the sanding station. Got a flap sander here. I'm going to very gently go over this. is the horns aren't exactly the same and even this one skull looks like it's a little larger than the other that's okay because uh, no buffalo skull is exactly the same as the other buffalo skull but yet the anatomy is correct that's that's the important thing is the anatomy you know every once in a while you have to stop and take a look at your piece and see how you're doing compared to what it is in real life if that's what you're trying to capture and that's what we're doing here okay so just just take a second and review yourself as you're going along all righty notice this one here has a little more bump on the top of his head than the other one but it still looks okay anyway let's get going here now first thing i want to do is take my horns off the skull first. Get out my water. Well, actually, I'll just take these and dip them in there, just like that. Now, notice how they changed color. Now, that works to our benefit because, contrary to popular belief, Bones are not pure white, and if you try to make them pure white, your carving's just going to not look right. So here I've got my white. These are the colors we're going to use. We're going to use white, yellow ochre, midnight blue, and naturally black, and probably a little dark burn umber for the horns. Okay? But we're going to start with white. So I'm going to squeeze me out a good dog clear of that. Get my big old AM brush here. And just start putting this on here. And you don't need to watch me lay all this color on because all I'm doing is painting this thing white. Okay, we've got the white on there, <clears throat> and you can see, hopefully, that uh, the wood is still showing back through. The color of the wood is still showing back through. This white has just a little bit of yellowish cast to it. That's fine, because bone is not white. It has color to it, and although white is a color, I guess, 
uh, we're going to put a little more. So I've squeezed me out a little bit of yellow ochre here. And we're not going to use very much of this. We're just going to use a little of it to highlight certain areas of the skull. I just want to wash it out. Last thing we want is a pure white skull. The color of the prairie is dry and yellow except in the springtime. So you got to sort of place your figure or what you're doing in the situation that it would be in real life. So this guy is laying out on the prairie. It's hot. It's dry yellow. So that's what we're going to make it. See there, it already makes it look better. Now, what else do we have out on the prairie? Well, up there in Montana, it's where his skull is. What's Montana known for? Well, it's the big sky country, so we've got lots of sky up there. So, my, like my old art teacher said, you've got to paint reflections of what is surrounding your figure. So we've got sky, and the sky is blue, so we're going to put a little blue on this piece to indicate that there's some blue Montana sky out there. Doesn't take much, just a little bit, a little bit. Area back in here, we'll put a little bit more in just to create some shadow and interest. Looks pretty good except for that spot right there. Lots of sky on the high points. That looks pretty good, I think. We'll put a little extra blue down in here. Bring that forward. And underneath here, this will probably never show. We'll put some in here. Just in case someone happens to pick this thing up and look underneath. Show you a little trick here. If you get your brush real wet and you just paint it over the surface, you get what you want. Is you want water down in all those little cracks. Get you a fine brush. Get you a little darker color. If you touch it in the deepest crack, your 
the water will just wick it down into the other cracks, hopefully. See that? See it crawl? Did you see that? See that? See how it crawls? That's how you can highlight areas without, you know, having to paint, paint into them. So let's just review that again. First of all, we're going to sort of flood the area with water. Make sure we don't have any bubbles in there. Get a little bit of the paint. Doesn't take much. And you want to touch the deepest crevice, right? There. See how that wicked? Really wicked there. See, it just crawls around. And you can do the same on these cracks. See? Well, now, if you notice it didn't crawl, that's because it wasn't wet. So we'll wet it down. We'll take a little of the color and we'll just touch it right there. See? Okay, so now we got our white on there, so the next step is the black for the eyeballs. I'm going to speed up the process here and dry this thing out, okay?